Lytton is in the riding of BC Conservative MP Brad Viss. He has been on the ground in the Fraser Canyon this week and uh, trying to get a sense of just, you know, the devastation and what uh, can be done to help the people in such a desperate situation. Brad Viss, hello. Good afternoon. So tell me uh, what you can, uh, based on the conversations you've been having and the briefings you've been having, on what the situation is as you understand it in Lytton right now. Yeah, well, the, as I reported uh, yesterday, 90% uh, of the village was destroyed. Uh, for those viewers today who aren't familiar with the Fraser Canyon, um, it, Lytton is the village where the two rivers meet. That's the Thompson and the Fraser River. So there's a natural wind tunnel in, in Lytton. Combine that uh, with three days of record setting temperatures, the highest in Canada ever, uh, we found ourselves in a worst case scenario for a forest fire. And it happened so quickly, and I, as I heard on your show earlier, um, people had to flee with the shirts on their backs. I was talking to constituents this morning who don't have their wallets because their house was on fire and they couldn't go back in and get it and they just had to get out of town so right now my constituents have spread out really across the province there's a couple hundred north in Lillooet a bunch went over to Merritt where I'm at right now and into Kamloops or south to Boston Bar or into the Fraser Valley um, so the situ right now we're still conducting provincial officials are still conducting a head count making sure that everyone is safe and our immediate priority is making sure that everyone has a cool place to stay and that they're well taken care of. And so what are you hearing from the mayor? Because I understand you, you have spoken with the mayor of Lytton, and uh, I can only imagine the job ahead of the mayor right now. Yeah, the mayor is understandably heartbroken. Um, the town center was destroyed. The hospital, RCMP uh, detachment, the city hall, the village library. All of it's gone and more in people's homes, of course. So the, the mayor, um, I'm going to be working closely with Mayor Polderman to make sure that Linton gets everything it needs uh, from the federal government. And so I'm working closely with officials at all levels of government right now just to make sure that people are, 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 are safe and that they're well taken care of. But Mayor Polderman is working really, really hard for the village right now um, and doing everything he can to make sure everyone's safe too. Uh, Mr. Viz, as you point out, a lot of people uh, got out with just like the clothes on their back because they left so quickly. Uh, do you have any idea how, generally speaking, people are faring, uh, n not just physically, but just even emotionally? Because I can't imagine what they're going through, just even trying to imagine what has happened uh, to their hometown. I mean, I've seen the pictures, the before and after, and they are just jaw-dropping. I can't imagine what they would be like for people who have spent their lives there. Yeah, I can say definitively that even constituents I spoke to this morning, they're in shock right now. Um, so there's definitely going to be a need for counseling services uh, to deal with post-traumatic stress disorder caused by this devastation. It's really bad. Yeah, I, I mean, it's hard to imagine. And it, it, are people going to want to go back? I'm just trying to, I, I, I can imagine the attachment. People, people want to go back. They do want to go back. Even people want to go back. The, the job of rebuilding is going to be a, like just daunting. Yeah, and I've, as I've been saying to constituents this morning, our first priorities uh, at all levels of government, accounting for everyone, making sure that everyone's safe, that they have shelter in the immediate term. And then, of course, next steps will involve uh, a reconstruction phase. But I, I already know that constituents are being contacted by their insurance agents. And we're going to be w working closely uh, with Premier Horgan uh, and the federal government to make sure that all of the resources are in place to build lit back. And is there a discussion, I know it's early, but is there a discussion about how to build Lytton back? Because presumably some of the conversation as we see more and more wildfires like this is going to be around uh, infrastructure and land management and uh, what we build with and what we don't build with. Is that a conversation that you would estimate as a priority when, when the plans uh, start forming? 
Yeah, well, we haven't even started. There's no conversations like that going on right now, to my knowledge, about building back already. Really, we're still, the crisis is in real terms. It's, it's happening as we speak. Uh, people are still uh, having connected with their families. So we're, we're dealing with those, those immediate concerns right now. And those conversations about rebuilding and a path forward uh, will be coming forward in the coming weeks. Uh, once an investigation is done, I'm sure, by Transport Canada as well. Um, so we, we have a lot of work to do. And how prepared are the communities that are now taking care of the people who've had to leave? How prepared are they and what plans are being discussed about, uh, you know, it seems to me this isn't going to be a short-term uh, resettling of people. It's going to be at least medium term if not longer. I mean, people at some point will go back to sort of see the devastation with their own eyes clearly, but in the meantime, they have to live somewhere. Yeah, well, I'll just, I'll just point out, like I was meeting with Lytton First Nation earlier this morning, and they're showing excellent leadership on behalf of all of their band members to make sure that everyone's safe and accounted for and doing everything in their power uh, to lead, lead their own recovery, and that's great. I had a call from Chehalis First Nation, which is in Harrison Mills, Chief Leon. Uh, Chief Leon uh, hosting people from Lytton First Nation, and a lot of the First Nations are working together. The fire crews uh, came from all over the province, are doing excellent work, and everyone's doing what they need to do right now to keep people safe. So it's uh, all hands on deck at the moment. And how are the lines of communication? Because people, as you pointed out earlier, are in any number of communities right now. Um, so it, it, have you been able to sort of figure out where, where everyone is and, and be able to keep them updated on what's going on and sort of, because I'm sure they're anxious for any information they can get? Yeah, yeah, and that's the immediate challenge we're facing right now because people left without their cell phones. As I reported yesterday, the critical infrastructure of Lytton was destroyed. That includes hydro, uh, telecommunications, Sewage and water are obviously down right now. The village core is destroyed. So the, a lot of the things that we take for granted aren't there, which is making um, reunification more challenging in the, in the immediate term to make sure that people are safe. But I know the emergency services here in Merritt and across the Fraser Canyon in the region are working extremely hard uh, through the TNRD and the various Indigenous bands and First Nations uh, to get that job done as a first priority. And have you spoken with, uh, w with any of the family or friends of the Chapman family? I have not had a chance to speak with the Chapman family, although I am aware um, about that tragedy. And, and I mean, you must have been heartbroken when you heard what happened. I, I, I'm also interested to know, you know, you know, it was like 15 minutes, white smoke, and then people were... Uh, yeah. essentially running for their lives. Uh, at what point did you realize what was going on in your community? Um, well, I, I oh, man, it was just, just a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's really so, the only word to describe. It just, it just happened so quickly. And um, yeah, people are really suffering. And it's my job to be there for them, and I'm going to fight for them. I can see how difficult this is. Um, Brad Biss, I, I know you have many important uh, things to do and many priorities to address, and uh, I, I thank you for taking the time to uh, let us know what's going on. And all I can say is I just, I just wish you and the people that you're trying to help uh, the very best under incredibly difficult circumstances. Thank you so much. Yeah, a big shout out to the first responders. Uh, they're, they're working really, really hard. I know the RCMP have brought in more officers, but it's, it's all hands on deck in British Columbia. we got a tough summer ahead of us. And uh, just thank you for all the volunteers and acts of goodwill um, which have come forward. I would be remiss if I just didn't end by stating that some of the immediate things that people need that I'm hearing from the first responders, like I said, people left without their wallets. They left without full tanks of gas. There's no gas station in Lytton anymore that they can access. Um, so people don't have, they can't even access their bank account. So a lot of people have been saying, well, what can I do? And they're, they're bringing a lot of things forward to the emergency centers, but really consider basic things like uh, gas cards, uh, uh, cards to Tim Hortons, uh, different restaurants, uh, so people can um, 
uh, have a little bit more flexibility with those donations. That's a, that's a big ask coming forward from the first responders that I wanted to pass on. I'm glad you did. It was important, I think, to end on that. Uh, Brad Viss, thank you very much. Thanks for your time today. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.